Uh, since we have to be precise with the time, I suggest we try to do that. Uh, really, we have 15 minutes for each presentation. Not to interrupt you, I will be sitting there. So with part of your eye, you might be seeing me and I will be just raising my paper so that you know that you have five minutes left. I hope that's enough for you to, to more or less understand where you're standing with the presentation. Uh, that would be all from me, and I would like to welcome the first presenter, uh, the presentation about the Michelin stars. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Karolina Machachkova. I'm coming from University, University College Prague. And our topic is discrepancies between Michelin Guide Awards and Google Restaurant Reviews. Food evokes emotions. So that's the reason why we chose Michelin Awards. And I'm pretty sure that uh, you will enjoy it. So please, next slide. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, people know the history of Michelin guides. Maybe you know the Michelin tire, uh, but Michelin guides are a series of guide boots that have been published by the French tire company Michelin's uh, since uh, 1900. In 1900, there were fewer than 3,000 uh, cars on the roads on France. To increase the demand for cars and car tires, car tire manufacturers and brothers Edouard and André Michelin uh, published a guide for French motorists, the Michelin Guide. Uh, it provided information to motorists such as maps, tire repair and replacement instructions, car mechanics listings, hotels and petrol stations throughout the France. Uh, one Michelin star is awarded to restaurants using top quality ingredients where dishes with distinct flavors are prepared to a consistently high standard. So one Michelin star means high quality cooking worth a stop. Two Michelin stars are awarded when the personality and talent of the chef are evident in their expertly crafted dishes. Their food is refined and inspired. Two Michelin stars means excellent cooking worth a detour. Three Michelin stars is our highest award given for the superlative cooking of chefs at the peak of their profession. Their cooking is elevated to an art form and some of their dishes are destined to become classic. So three Michelin stars means exceptional cuisine worth a special journey. There are five universal criteria to be awarded if a restaurant wants to get a Michelin star. First of all is, of course, the quality of ingredients, the harmony of flavors, mastery of techniques, the personality of the chef as expressed through the cuisine, and the last but not least, the consistency, both across the entire menu and over the time. Point one and five are probably the most essential and most crucial, so quality and consistency. Consistency is really very important when awarding Michelin stars. Various inspectors visit throughout the seasons for lunch as well for dinner, both at the weekend and during the week. The style of a restaurant and its degree of formality or informality have no bearing of the award. The famously anonymous Michelin inspectors are full-time employees. They are hospitality professionals, professionals in gastronomy, cuisine, centric analysis. They make the decisions. Once several inspectors have eaten at the restaurant, uh, then they discuss their experience as a team in order to make a final decision. 
any restaurant of any style and cuisine type can quality for a star. So some Michelin starts are innovative, some traditional, some offer set menus, others a la carte, some are casual places, others are very, very formal. So it was a very brief introduction to our research. The aim of our research was to find out to what extent the restaurant reviews available in Google Maps reflect the expert evaluation of Michelin inspectors in the example of capital of Czech Republic, Prague. Two online platforms were used for Prague. The Michelin Guide online platform, which is expert rating from uh, Michelin inspectors, and the Google Reviews online platform. The difference between Google Reviews and Michelin Guide online platform is that Google Reviews is public or customer rating. And as already mentioned, Michelin Guide is about expert rating. We analyzed almost 6,000 Google Reviews of 26 restaurants included in the Michelin Guide for Prague. Restaurants were recorded according to a word level, Michelin star, abbreviation S, like star, Bib Gourmand, B, and restaurant included in the guide, but without an award. I'm not sure, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if all of you know what the Bib Gourmand uh, is. So Bib Gourmand Award is a simply a recent award created in uh, 1997, attributed by the Michelin Guide. It distinguishes the good restaurant that offer delicious cuisine at an affordable price. This means that the price of the menu must not exceed about 30 euros uh, in uh, capitals and provinces. And Bib Gourmand Award winning restaurant must offer a complete menu with starter, main course and dessert with an outstanding price or quality ratio. So uh, also the Bib Gourmand is obviously less prestigious than the Michelin start. It still does reward the quality restaurants. For some of the reviews, the number of stars for the food, the service and the atmosphere were also available. So uh, this is the first uh, table, uh, including 26 Prague restaurants, uh, some of them awarded uh, with Michelin star, some of them awarded with Bib Gourmand Award, and some of them are not awarded. So uh, this is the second uh, table uh, that focuses on the correlation metrics of particular evaluations. I will explain in easy words. The highest positive correlation indicates an increase in overall satisfaction together with an increase in food satisfaction. On the contrary, the lowest positive correlation indicates a moderate increase in the values of satisfaction with the food together with an increase in the values of perceived atmosphere. So to summarize, when customers and inspectors were satisfied with food quality, they were usually satisfied with atmosphere. In this case, it can be argued that the evaluation of the ordinary guests, normal clients from the street, hypothetically underlining the major role of the quality of food in their overall satisfaction in the line with the approach of expert evaluations of the Michelin Guide, who also focus their attention on the quality of the food when awarding awards. Now, some amazing findings based on our statistic tasting. It doesn't seem that more frequent or less frequent publication of reviews by ordinary guests 
means a better or worse rating values of the restaurant by the guests. Restaurants closer or to further away from the center of Prague have not a higher or lower frequency of overall uh, uh, confession or uh, food service atmosphere reviews. No statistically significant correlation was found between the distance of the restaurant from the center and the average prices. Also, it could be expected that the center of Prague with generally high prices could also mean higher prices in the restaurants included in the Michelin Guide, but it is not our case. More expensive restaurants show fewer published reviews on the Google platform. More expensive restaurants included in the Michelin Guide tend to be rated worse by guests on Google reviews. Guests posting their reviews, including more detailed reviews on Google, do so statistically significantly more if the restaurant is awarded a Michelin star of a Big Month award. Restaurant awarded a Michelin star or a Big Month award are not statistically more expensive than the non-awarded restaurants. Results indicate an apparent discrepancy uh, between the evaluation of experts and ordinary consumers. Regarding price analysis, the frequency of Google reviews decreases with increasing meal prices. The increasing price level decreases the overall satisfaction of regular guests with restaurant facilities. The explanation for such a result might be linked to higher expectations associated with higher prices. Visiting awarded restaurants doesn't result in greater satisfaction with the food or higher overall satisfaction when compared to non-awarded restaurants. Visiting an awarded restaurant perceives its atmosphere slightly worse compared to a non-awarded restaurant. Michelin star or Bib Gourmand award doesn't mean increased price levels. But the most paradoxical results are that visiting awarded restaurants compared to non-awarded restaurants doesn't result in greater satisfaction with the food or higher overall satisfaction. Such a result indicates an apparent discrepancy between the evaluation of experts and ordinary consumers. Uh, the tendency is also demonstrated at the level of the three case uh, restaurants, which are perceived fundamentally differently in quality by regular consumers, but are granted by the same award by Michelin Guide experts. This study comes with the result that consumers visiting an awarded restaurant perceive its atmosphere as slightly worse compared to a non-awarded restaurant. So it's all for me. And if you have any questions, I will try to reply. Thank you very much. You are very punctual <laughs> with the time questions. Anyone, please, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Uh, we included 26 restaurants uh, into our research, and we uh, went step by step uh, in uh, Google reviews and Michelin Guide online platform, and uh, we uh, compared the prices of all of the restaurants. We found uh, many, many differences between the prices, and to be concluded, we cannot say that the um, Michelin star awarded restaurants are extremely more expensive than the non-awarded restaurants.
which uh, we also were uh, quite surprised of the fact. <laughs> It's not most probable that you will write, yeah. Yeah, uh, first of all, I would like to explain uh, the Michelin experts uh, who award Michelin star are professionals. So their point of view is different uh, than the point of view of ordinary clients. So Michelin experts uh, especially uh, uh, evaluate consistency and quality. There is of the Michelin experts. They are experts in gastronomy sensory evaluation. Ordinary clients like me and you uh, evaluate not only quality, but also the atmosphere, prices, uh, style of cuisine. If the waiter or waitress was polite to you, but these attributions are not uh, important for the Michelin experts, for the Michelin inspectors. So this is the first discrepancy because the point of view, the attitude of Michelin experts is different than the attitude of normal clients. The second uh, problem is that when the client is uh, not satisfied uh, and feels a little bit uh, angry uh, of something, for example, you uh, pay high price and you are not confident with the food, you are angry, you have bad mood and you write uh, negative reference on the internet. So uh, it's about emotions, of course. And the third factor is that some clients are snoobish they drive Mercedes and they visit Michelin restaurants. And some types of clients uh, expect 100% service in everything. So if something goes a little bit different than they expect, they also write negative reference. So uh, this is the reason of the discrepancies, I'm sure. Okay, hey, thank you very much. I, I, I'm sure that the rest of the interesting discussion may be done during the coffee break. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, so we have the next presenter with e tourist in a historical city. Please. Did you put your presentation early? Uh -huh. Okay, so good. Thanks. Uh, okay, uh, because if I stay there, you will not see me. <laughs> uh, so um, I, my name is Bianca Tescasiu. I come from Brasov, uh, which is a city in Romania. It's a touristical city which developed very much uh, lately. Uh, I wrote this article with one of my PhD students, which uh, works actually, she's a director in our city hall. Uh, for tourists, um, 
And the article regards a case study based on um, implementing the concept of E, E-tourist, E-tools, E-things, um, in a historical city, in an ancient city like my city, Brasov. Um, <clears throat> the presentation is structured, as you can see, in a short introduction. I will present you the methodology of our case study, and then a few words about Brasov, um, and then the results and discussions and the conclusions of our case study. So as introduction, uh, I know, um, I'm sure you know, everybody knows that uh, lately during the late, I could say 10 years, we cannot uh, do anything uh, in communication, in promotion, in Cre uh, uh, creating a prod product without this um, implementation of smart uh, technologies in tourism. Um, I think uh, the challenge is very big for everybody, but it's bigger from touristic cities, uh, from uh, ancient touristic cities, I would say, historical cities, as you will see, Brasov, at the first impression, is not a city that is suitable for this kind of um, uh, technologies. But um, starting with 2000, our um, representatives and policymakers decided to implement these technologies uh, because uh, Brasov becomes more and more interesting as a touristic city and we cannot skip uh, this trend. So what are the benefits? Um, the benefits uh, focuses on two categories, at least the two categories of uh, stakeholders. First of all, um, the authorities, uh, which can do uh, better promotion by using these tools. And now, uh, lately, also on tourists, which can contribute on the so-called co-creation of the touristic product. Um, Actually, we are uh, the beneficiaries of some um, uh, experiences uh, given us by, uh, for instance, Gordon, Gordon Ramsay, if you heard about him, uh, came to Brasov and did some movies uh, with our cuisine. Uh, we experienced this co-creation of uh, specific to tourism. Um, which actually uh, encourage very much the tourists to do that uh, more often. Uh, our methodology is based on a case study uh, and uh, approaches the theory related to this methodology. The aim of the study was to identify the me methods and instruments used by the local authorities to develop this, to develop this smart uh, tourist technology, the STTs. Um, and for achieving this objective, this goal, we established three objectives. First of all, to identify the theoretical framework of these uh, tools, of these instruments, technologies, then to identify the state of art in Brasov, and finally to assess the way that the, the authorities and the tourists can uh, contribute and can use these STTs in uh, order to develop the touristic product. Uh, the research design was a descriptive case study. Uh, we choose that uh, because we have uh, a lot of information, so it was very accessible to us. Regarding the objectives, um, they were realized through three specific processes. The first one for the first objective was the literature review which the expected out outcome to build a theoretical framework, which is also a contribution of our article because we applied this theoretical framework in a specific sector as tourism is represents. The second one, the data analysis uh, with the purpose to identify the local authorities' actions. And the third one to find in a process of reflection uh, how the smart uh, touristic technology are used in our city and how could be they improved in the next future. 
uh, a few words about Brasov. Brasov is a city in the center of Romania, as you can see. It's exactly in the center. Um, we are the beneficiaries of a, a very uh, favorable conditions for tourists. That's why we practice a lot of tourists. The first and uh, let's say the classic uh, tourism in Brasov is represented by the mountain tourists. Uh, we have a resort nearby, it is called Poyana Brasov, uh, which is uh, very famous. Um, we cannot understand, I can uh, confess you that, for instance, the prices is, are higher than um, um, in, um, I don't know, Switzerland, uh, and uh, the resort is full uh, every season. We cannot understand why. Uh, actually, we can. It is also it's a beautiful resort. It has a lot of slopes. It is orientated for mountain tourists. Um, we hosted some Olympics for youth. Um, and um, it's also a um, trendy uh, resort, a fashion uh, resort. Uh, another type of tourism are the cultural tourism. As we have a lot of cultural objectives, we, have, we are an ancient city. Um, our history, our first mentioned in history uh, was in uh, the 15th century, so we have a lot of uh, cultural objectives. Um, and more than that, we have two minorities living with us, the Hungarian minority and the German minority, and each of them brings us uh, specific elements of culture. So we are very attractive in that. Then sport, leisure, and recreation, as I told you, especially through our resort, Poyana Brasov. Religious tourists, we have a lot of churches and religious um, objectives. Uh, and uh, starting with, uh, after the revolution, we started other kind of, to, to practice other kind of tourism, uh, the business and mice tourism, uh, the medical tourism, as we have a lot of uh, private hospitals which are um, um, requested, especially by um, uh, tourists and people for abroad, from abroad, city break type of tourism. And as I told you, the grass show tourism, actually we um, have our own um, uh, products which are licensed in Romania and in Europe. Regarding the first uh, objectives, uh, the first objective of creating the theoretical framework, as we, you can see, uh, we uh, approached uh, the specific uh, terms for STTs, how can they be implemented, the co-design concept or co-creation uh, as a tool of experiential marketing, um, the new tools for uh, the stakeholders, these, the so-called e-tools, uh, the collaborative actions, as you can, as we know, this is also a term, um, a very a modern term, which was applied in uh, tourism, the smart destination. I can tell you that Brasov is the first city in Romania which adopted this concept of smart touristic destination in 2008. The second one, what did um, the policymakers in Brasov regarding these issues. As you can see, we have a lot of strategies uh, for um, sustainable development, for smart, uh, for becoming a smart touristic destination. Uh, we are part of smart and green initiatives. Um, for instance, the Clean Environment Awards Gala, where Brasov got a prize. And uh, Let's get to the point, what Brasov does uh, for the e-tourist and what are the benefits that the tourist uh, can achieve through these e-initiatives. Uh, we developed first the, a platform, which is called the e-tourist, where the tourists can find the information about uh, our city. I will finish it too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, about our city and our um, uh, initiatives. Um, and then um, we doubled these initiatives with 
um, an involvement of our policymakers in the national policies. Um, we are very proud that starting uh, from June, we have our airport. It was a very uh, big achievement for us uh, because um, we are better connected with um, um, tourists from Romania and abroad. Um, it's activity, actually the, the problem on the, of infrastructure uh, is very serious for, for, for Brasov because from Bucharest to Brasov, there are only 180 kilometers, uh, but because they are um, through mountains and we don't have a highway, uh, you can um, do this 180 kilometers in five or six hours sometimes. So it's very annoying for tourists. Uh, that's why we are very proud that we have the airport, which was cheaper to build than the highway because of the mountains. Uh, then, <coughs> sorry. Um, the policymakers decided to develop an integrated platform uh, in collaboration with uh, different categories of stakeholders. The platform includes our logo, which is believe, believe it, believe it, you see there. there. Um, and this is a very uh, modern and uh, very useful platform that can be used by all the tourists. So now we can affirm for sure that we have uh, this concept of e-tourist very well implemented in Brasov. Regarding the third objectives, uh, the first objective, uh, we can see that the authorities are very uh, involved in this process, that the tourists became part of the co-creation, so uh, there are all the conditions of fulfilling the e-tourist um, uh, concept are achieved. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. Please, ladies and gentlemen, questions? Sorry. Um, as I told you, uh, I wrote this article uh, in collaboration with one of my PhD students, which works at the county hall. Um, in this um, part of implementing the project and uh, her PhD thesis is has these objectives to uh, contribute to the increase of um, um, the e-tourist and uh, also management organization issues uh, which she intends to apply in her activity. So her thesis will be not only theoretical, but practical. She's only in the <coughs> first year, so she just started, uh, but we have uh, high hopes to, to achieve a good thesis and she wants to apply it in her work. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Then I have a question, maybe it's yes. less about particular your research, but generally about the brush of uh, tourist development. Uh, do you or does the city uh, analyze how many tourists arrive from Romania or how many and how many tourists arrive from from yes. abroad in the context of language and adjusting some facilities for w with the language for yes, people we have abroad. these analyzes. Um, and um, lately, in the last years, uh, the number of uh, international tourists increased and uh, it became uh, higher than the Romanian tourists. But we are very proud to have a lot of Romanian tourists. Uh, as I told you, Brasov is one of the most uh, fashionable touristic destinations in Romania. Uh, last year, we have been the third touristic city uh, from our country. So the third uh, touristic destination, which is quite something considering the fact that Romania is a very um, uh, blessed uh, with touristic uh, destination, touristic uh, issues. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so our next presenter will tell us about Portuguese thermal hotels. And I, I think I will not be not mistaken to say that you received the award. 
for the paper yesterday. For anyone who wasn't present yesterday in the last section, we can congratulate the ladies once again with winning the best paper award now at our conference. <laughs> Um, um, good morning. I'm uh, Anna Campon, and I'm going to present uh, the work, uh, which are the factors that limit the tourist experience in Portuguese Terma hotels and exploration using UGC. Uh, this is a work developed by researchers from the University of Extremadura, Spain, and the University of Aire Interior in Portugal. We have a structure or a presentation in five parts, the introduction, the theoretical context, methodology, results, and conclusions. Uh, to introduce our topic of research, we have to talk about thermalism, that is an activity with a long history in uh, countries such as Portugal or Spain. In recent decades, thermal spas have tried to modernize their facilities and services to be considered facilities for relax and um, uh, more than uh, only therape the, their therapeutic value of the, of the treatment. Thermal tourism, uh, we can define thermal tourism as the set of activities related to the use of mineral medicinal waters, different from the tap water or the sea water that other type of tourism uh, similar to thermal tourism. Uh, but uh, nowadays, the increase in the demand and supply of thermal tourism has led to an increased competition and that uh, leads to uh, the, se the sector is experiencing a period of redefinition and consolidation. And it is the reason why we, need, we, we understand that uh, research is uh, required. Uh, some authors have approached the knowledge uh, of their experience in thermal spas and spas concerning their facilities, for example, their hotel or resorts. However, literature in this regard is still scarce. And this is the gap that we try to fill. Uh, travelers' experiences can be positive or negative, leaving the establishment's reputation in the hands of the online reviews, the reviews that Tourist um, uh, right on online platforms. Uh, to this regard, we can say that Gander and, uh, and other authors propose a model for the analysis for the thermal hotels experience by, based on the well known four dimensional uh, model proposed by, by Panel and Gilmore. We can say the, the, the authors that propose the experience economy concept. Um, and they also propose the four realms of the experience. Uh, the four realms or dimensions are entertainment, education, aesthetics, and escapist. The authors use this model uh, to conduct a qualitative technique of online review analysis that uh, is the analysis in which we uh, base our study. Uh, the change of opinions in the internet, known as user-generated content, is an outstanding source of information. And in internet, we can uh, find a large amount on, of information that allows allow us to approach tourist experiences, opinions, and feelings using those uh, that um, reviews. Then the importance of electronic word of mouth. Uh, has been the basis of studies that conclude that positive feedback generates positive attitude, but negative opinions generate the opposite effect. Then uh, this work aims to set light on issues that need improvement in a global experience that integrates balneotherapy services with the hotel's complementary services. Uh, in order to pursue the satisfaction and loyalty of the tourists who visit them. Uh, thus, our objective is to analyze the factors that limit the, tourist, the tourism experience in thermal, thermal hotels through the use of the reviews made by users of these facilities. The context of the study, geographical context of the study was Portugal. Uh, 
as uh, we uh, we insert our um, work in the context, theoretical context of thermal tourism that can be defined as a part of health tourism. Um, thermalism has explored new, new, new opportunities and new concepts are, are emerging in the thermal spaces, including integrated, holistic and sustainable approaches. Uh, tourism products that link water and health, what uh, as is the case of thermal tourism, have a, has a, are a response to modern tourists who seek uh, living better. Uh, and in this case, thermal springs uh, are interesting for relax and for health. Water related tourism experiences are also positively related to satisfaction, loyalty, loyalty, and people's quality of life. Um, then we understand that in terms of marketing, that those are uh, results that we have to uh, deepen. Uh, Gandhara and other authors carried out a study of the quality of thermal experience uh, in Galicia, Spain, based on the cited model of Pine and Gilmore, uh, and also uh, with the, 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 the model uh, insert the, the dimensions of the uh, circular uh, scale. Then the result leads to a model of measuring the thermal hotel experience. Other authors such as Ms. Rampanda use, use sentiment analysis to identify areas of improvement in service delivery, customer relationships and hotel management in wellness resort in India, and other authors, uh, for example, Chen and other, uh, identify four key drivers in the experience scape in a spa hotel. Given these precedents, uh, the, this paper aims to continue to shed light on the thermal tourism experience by identifying the factors limiting it. We, um, um, we um, sorry, the scenario of our study is Portugal, a uh, country where health and wellness tourism is is, is important is, is, uh, it is being developing uh, de developed uh, and nowadays thermal activities are say, taking into account the therapeutic effects of thermal waters combining them to with more recreational and touristic activities and also in Portugal uh, this is considered uh, one of the most promising tourism subsectors. Then it's a subsector very important for destination development. In Portugal, uh, there are uh, 63 uh, uh, thermal establishments, but only 43 are in use. Uh, the sample of, uh, of the, our study uh, was composed by uh, thermal establishment of the Association das Termas de Portugal. Uh, that association uh, identified th three groups of establishments. The first one is thermal spas and accommodation integrated into the same building or with interior connection between buildings uh, of the same owner or different owners. And this is the group in which uh, we focus our attention and our work because it responds to an integrated thermal spa experience concerning wellness treatment, accommodation, food, and activity services. Other groups have thermal uh, establishment separated for, from the, the rest of the services. Web scrapping techniques were used to collect data and the database was built using reviews posted on Booking because uh, it guarantees real and reliable opinions and differentiates between positive and negative comments. Our objective is to, uh, to analyze negative comments, to identify the factor that limits the tourism, the, the tourist experience. Um, our uh, sample is composed by 10 thermal hotels. Uh, nine of them uh, has the have the categories of three and four stars, which implies a medium high quality standards. 
The comments have downloaded on August of this year, and the comments analyzed were uh, were uh, wrote or registered in Portuguese language. Uh, the database uh, was composed by uh, 3,090 comments. This paper performs a qualitative content analysis based on a frequency count, and, uh, pro uh, and the, uh, that means uh, a frequency. Sorry, a frequency count uh, based on the model of uh, Gandhara and other authors. The model uh, differentiates between escapees, aesthetics, entertainment, and educational dimensions with their items. Uh, we use the sorry, oh, sorry. We use the software and be able to analyze data. Uh, regarding the results, uh, the software provided a hierarchical, a hierarchical map graphic that graphically show the code structure of our uh, anal anal analysis. Then uh, the size of the of the squares represents the frequency of occurrence of these codes. Then we can say that escapist dimension is the most cited dimension followed by aesthetics, entertainment, and educational. In the first uh, dimension, escapist dimension has the greatest weight in the hierarchical map and therefore is the most negative, negatively rated by tourists. It refers to the tangi tangible uh, services of the hotel, such as food, uh, highlighting the variety and quality of the breakfast. Comfort is also value that is user related to the rooms, such as the site, temperature, bed, or noise. Uh, one example of those comments uh, is, there is obvious carelessness uh, throughout the space, spider webs on the lamps, in the communal areas, dust in the wardrobes, etc. Um, another example, the quality of the products was also being declined with no variety, the same offer every day, it's ATC. Services are also elements that limit the experience, the lack of information uh, on issues related to the hotel, such as the functioning of the swimming pool, was, were, were also uh, stand, uh, uh, highlighted. The lack of entertainment is highlighted too in this dimension. The aesthetic dimension is the next worst rated dimension. Uh, it uh, counts with uh, elements uh, such as maintenance, cleanliness, price, reputation, or decoration. In the most, the most highly valued items were the swimming pool, the rooms, and the hotel in general, given that the lack of cleanliness and maintenance. Regarding the price, in some cases, the extra cost of the swimming pool causes dissatisfaction. In terms of the environment, the views of the room are highlighted. And regarding reputation, it, it stands out when the hotel generates confusing information with communications. An example of this, misleading advertising, hotel with no swimming pool on the facilities, we have to walk more than HC. And the third dimension uh, is uh, entertainment regarding the thermal equipment and facilities. And in this case, the fact that the pools are not in the good condition or the jets do not meet the needs, this means the experience since it is the product that really uh, tourists seek. Uh, the, the water quality is also mentioned, and the opening hours or the use time is also considered. And the last uh, dimension is education, educational dimension regarding the interaction with other people, like staffs or other guests. Uh, to uh, sum up, these results are in line with the study of Gandhara, who analyzed the quality of thermal experiences in, in Portugal, Spain. And the, our results uh, co co uh, follow the same order that, are, that uh, the, the, the result of Gandhara. Escapims is, would be the first uh, dimension followed by aesthetics, entertainment, and educational. It seems that the thermal hotel experiences, experience is mainly limited by items related to the escapist dimension, but in this case by functional uh, factors. And uh, regarding uh, elements linked to service delivery, uh, could, we, we can say that the, those factors are most uh, the, 
are, is, it's, a type, it's a type more, more emotional. Uh, education dimension is the last negatively, negatively rated. And we, in other words, and, and to, to sum up, we can say that the basic products generate dissatisfaction to a greater extent. It is the reason why this dimension is not, uh, is not uh, the most rated. Uh, to conclude, we try to shed a light on the thermal tourism experiences, uh, trying to identify that the factors that limit the experience. Uh, thermal experience mainly is limited by elements related to escapist dimension of experience, also the educational dimension is the least negatively rated. Theoret theoretically, this work aims to contribute to understanding the thermal tourist experience in a, because it is a feeling evolution uh, due to the pressure of the changing tourism and demand and the need to improve of competi competitiveness of the establishment. And uh, we try to understand uh, this phenomenon uh, uh, since the point of view of an integrated experience. On a practical level, we try to offer uh, strategies for the sector, limitations, a small sample of uh, hotels in Portugal. We would try to um, improve the size of, our, uh, of the sample. And future research lines, for, for, example, for example, analyze the positive comments to understand which are the factors that highlight the, uh, the experience. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions, please? Yes. Thank you. The aesthetic dimension, because uh, they are the um, the um, the factors that uh, compose the the activity uh, and compose the the um, the service escape and the price in, in that case is is important. But we we are uh, we we sustain our uh, research in the research of those authors. And those authors argue that price is in that uh, in that uh, dim dimension. Thank you. Anyone else, please? And I have a short question. You mentioned that you took uh, the comments in Portuguese language, right? Portuguese language, yeah. yes. Uh, did you analyze how many comments you had? Uh, the the facilities have in English. What was the proportion? I mean, have you maybe? lost some valuable um, part of the commands because you excluded English. Yes, the Portuguese uh, comments were the 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 most the language mm -hmm. more most used. Okay. English comments, for example, were were lit a little amount of that, mm -hmm. of them. Then we understand that it was better to understand Portuguese because they offer most information. Okay. And to use uh, different languages in the program, it can introduce any problem mm -hmm. in the analysis. Then we try to um, uh, to, to conduct the, yeah. the research in a, in mm -hmm. a simple way to understand better the phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. And I would like to invite our next presenter uh, with the hospitality marketing strategies topic. Uh -huh.
you all hear me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so good morning to everyone. Uh, the research I'm presenting, it's a, a, a beginning uh, of a larger uh, research uh, we developed. Uh, my name is Dalio Librato. I'm from the Polytechnic of Porto in Portugal. Uh, also, Porto, it's a, a very important and increasing uh, tourism destination uh, in Portugal. It's increasing and it's developing, uh, we hope, in a sustainable way. Um, and the research we are uh, bringing here, uh, me, uh, Pedro, uh, two other colleagues and one uh, student, uh, uh, concerns to hospitality marketing strategies in urban events. So this is the structure, this is the main structure of my presentation. Can I have the, I prefer that stay here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so the, the structure of my presentation is divided uh, effectively in uh, uh, five, uh, in six main sections. Um, we are going to highlight uh, the topic that, that we are bringing here. Also, some uh, points that you may uh, see in the article. I'm not going to focus very much on the literature review. Also, the objectives of this research, the methodology. It's a qualitative, uh, qualitative methodology. Presentation and discussion of results and main conclusions. So regarding the topic, uh, events, marketing strategies in hospitality. Uh, we all know uh, that one of the main factors attracting tourism destinations are events and particularly urban events, okay? Once we talk about uh, uh, little destinations or inland destinations also, we need to improve some uh, um, regional events, but regarding urban destinations, we need to connect and to provide a stronger cooperation and a stronger uh, strategy of cooperation between the hospitality sector and also um, the organizers or uh, the organizations connected to uh, most important and relevant events in these destinations. So in Portugal, and in the case of two cities, Oporto and Lisbon, the events uh, have a growing importance in the attractiveness and economic benefits of tourism destinations, and in particular, also for the hospitality sector. So this research aims to understand the influence of the events in the cities of Lisbon and Porto on the hotel industry, specifically from the perspective of hotel marketing. Why is this study uh, relevant? We think that we bring some, uh, an initial discussion and we bring some initial data regarding the influence that events can have on marketing strategies, planning and implementation by hotels to maximize their revenue, of course. Our literature review is focused on two main topics and in each one, some other uh, relevant topics regarding events tourism, for example, and you may find it in, your, in our article, we discussed a little about the characterization of event tourism, which are the main uh, important events and typologies of events, profile and motivations of event tourists, event tourism in Portugal, and also the impact of the COVID-19 on tourism. This is this uh, specific um, topic regards uh, the time where we developed the research which, which was at the end of the COVID-19. So we still had at that moment some impact related to the uh, pandemic moment. Also, regarding the hotel marketing, we bring some literature review uh, regarding the characterization of hotel marketing and so also event tourism and communication in the hotel sector. Uh, when we talk about um, the characterization of event tourism, we speak uh, specifically in our research about business events, 
cultural events and festivals, entertainment events and sporting events also. Regarding the tourist profile and motivations, we focused on three main topics, the push and pull factors, uh, to uh, events tourism, the definition of the target marketing, and also the profile of tourists according to the type of the event. Characterizing the event tourism in Portugal, we identify the most relevant events for the cities of Lisbon and Oporto, and also the impact of event tourism in these both uh, cities. And regarding the impact of COVID-19 on tourism, we talk about the impact of this pandemic moment on events tourism specifically and hospitality also. Uh, and uh, we discuss uh, also based on the literature review some prospects for the recovery of events tourism and hospitality. Regarding the hotel marketing, we speak about the evolution of hotel industry's objectives from accommodation to offering unique experiences for the consumer. And previously, we had uh, a very interesting research uh, regarding thermal tourism um, also in uh, accommodation and the hospitality sector. Uh, event tourism and communication in the hotel sector strategies used by hotels to maximize revenue in the presence of events. And after the literature review, it's very important to say that, uh, um, as it, uh, uh, we all know, um, all of the, the methods and all of the data collection that we provided in this research was based also on the literature review. Our research question is, how's, how do events influence hotel marketing in Lisbon and Oporto? And the general objective of our research is, to understand how events influence hotel marketing in both cities. Regarding our main specific objectives, we had uh, uh, presented some five specific objectives to identify the most important events for the hotel industry in both cities, to understand how hotels are preparing in terms of marketing to capture and respond to the needs of event participants, analyze the existence of differences in the marketing strategies adopted by hotels in both cities, understand the relationship between hotels and the event organizers, organizers in event tourism, and also understand the industry's adaptation to the challenges arising from the COVID-19. Regarding the methodology we applied, we used a qualitative uh, methodology, qualitative, exploratory, descriptive, and cross-sectional methodology uh, with some structured interviews to hotel representatives and event organizer, organizers' representatives also. Our sample uh, was uh, uh, constituted by 11 participants, seven hotel representatives, four from Porto and three in Lisbon, and four uh, representatives of um, events in both cities also in Oporto and in Lisbon. Regarding the procedures, of course, we developed, we designed the, the, the interview. Uh, all of the interview was based on the literature review it's uh, uh, justified on the literature review, as you will see on the article. Also, we developed some contacts um, to uh, uh, ask uh, for the availability of the interview. We scheduled and we sent the, inf the informed consent. Also, we conducted the interviews through video conference and we processed the data collection. So regarding uh, the identification of the most relevant events, of course, uh, we have some events which um, are relevant in both cities and are increasing in both cities, specifically business events, but also sporting events. But we have some other events which are uh, very important for us and connected to uh, some of the most important tourism resources, both in Porto and in Lisbon, and our cultural uh, events, of course. 
So business events and sporting events are the ones most important to uh, the hospitality sector at the corporate um, events, uh, of course, very important for the hospitality sector. Most of them are uh, usually in uh, these uh, um, infrastructures also. Regarding the impact on hotels, uh, all of the, the, the interviews uh, agreed with the positive impact and also uh, meaning an increase in reservations and also uh, ADR. What matters is that we sell directly without having to pay any commission. And when there are strong events, we succeed. Some of the interviews also um, brought that results. The condition for hosting events, flexibility of hotels, timetables and products, which means that once they have a big event or a mega event, in these urban areas, Oporto and Lisbon, they have some flexibility to offer some specific products and also to adapt their uh, timetables. Regarding the influence of events on marketing strategies, they uh, agree in uh, only one sentence, events play a key role in defining a marketing strategy also promoting and publicizing events. In some cases there are, or there is an ongoing commitment between the hospitality sector and also um, the organizers of these events, but uh, they also agree to the need to move towards greater digital transformation in the hospitality uh, supply. Some benefits regarding the repercussion of, of adopting strategies influenced by events, some benefits that uh, uh, they, they had, um, some, some of them are very important for the destinations, but also for the sector, which are extended stays, intention to return, welcoming proposals for accommodation combined with events, uh, of course, they uh, finally result in benefits for the hospitality sector. Some hotels with a greater connection to the corporate segments have a much more defined marketing strategy based on events. And we, we, we think that if we enlarged uh, this research to the inland territory and the inland hospitality sector in Portugal, we would find some differences. Uh, only two, okay. <laughs> but in urban areas, we have more defined marketing strategies. So the relationship between hotels and events organizers, um, all of them agree, uh, but specifically in Lisbon, that it is essential a close relationship between the organizations which are responsible for managing the event, its operation, and their connections or cooperation with hotels in order to provide uh, an only uh, product to extend the stay in uh, uh, the destinations. Regarding uh, the contribution of event organizers to hotel bookings, some partnerships should be created to enhance benefits to both parts, the destination and the organizations of the events. And also we need to create some initiatives around the events to extend tourists overnight stays in the destination. Regarding the COVID-19, um, they found very important to communicate Porto and Lisbon as safe destinations and also the accessibility and transparency of the communication. To conclude, um, we think uh, and we found uh, through these answers that business events and sporting events are the most relevant, but also we have an increasing uh, in importance connected to cultural and entertainment uh, events. Uh, currently, it's very important for the hospitality se sector, the price strategy, the digital marketing strategy and partnerships with events organizations that the, this is the main conclusion 
regarding uh, marketing and uh, the answer to the needs of the tourism sector, especially uh, the tourists events, motivations and uh, needs. We didn't find any differences between uh, the two cities, but some hotels with a greater connection to the co corporate segment have a much more defined marketing strategy based on events. So the need for cooperation between the hospitality sector and the organization of the events. Also, some three aspects uh, that we need to keep after the COVID-19, the security, safety, technology as a strategic advantage and recovering air routes in Oporto. And finally, we also uh, identified in the article, you will find some relevant events in both cities um, also, some procedures that hospitality sector use to maximize their revenue, and also how to uh, some proposals that we 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 present in our article on how to strengthen the relationship between hotels and event organizers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Anyone? <laughs> Somehow I also didn't come up with the questions. I guess that's because everything was clear. And I congratulate you on the presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so I would like to invite the next speaker, Smart Tourism Models. Great. And uh, I come from the University College Prague, uh, while my husband, the co-author of the, of the paper, uh, comes from Czech Technical University. Uh, we both are not pure academicians. Uh, we are a uh, long life, uh, some, something between uh, practitioners and academicians, uh, but uh, our common passion is definitely tourism and uh, aviation business uh, of my of my husband. So uh, the agenda, I mean, the, the basic points are clear. So you can just see the points and the keywords, the key terms uh, the paper is dealing with. So uh, the paper is dealing with smart city concept, with uh, smart tourism models uh, of chosen European city destinations, uh, Valencia, Vienna, and Prague. And uh, it's actually based on content analysis, on qualitative uh, approach with uh, the results, uh, especially for, for Prague, but not only for it. The aim of the paper is to analyze and compare the smart city destination models uh, and strategies of selected smart city in Europe in terms of three parameters, uh, destination governance, smart strategy and planning, and implementation of digital technological solution. So uh, I am not technologist. Uh, I am long life um, uh, dealing with the tourism management uh, specialized on destination management marketing. So also the, the framework of the paper um, is in this uh, respect. So we posed two research questions and two premises. So the first one is, uh, was the strategic basis of the smart city destination model in selected destinations? Because we, we can see that everything is smart, but uh, there are big differences, uh, big variations what digitization projects are being implemented by selected smart city destinations. So the idea is, uh, may I or can I introduce or launch successful digital projects without having good strategy, good base? So two premises, the first one, the higher the volume of incoming tourism affecting the lives of residents, the longer term, 
and strategic orientation towards digitization and sustainability in the destination. And the second, the smart city destination models include elements of sustainability in all three areas, ecological, economical, economic, sorry, and social cultural. That's uh, something what's uh, reflecting uh, the COVID uh, pandemic period, uh, because uh, the, the meaning uh, of the term sustainability definitely changed during uh, this, uh, this time. Concerning literature review, the first part, it's uh, focusing on smart city concept. So I mean in general or from general point of view, so we can uh, go back uh, to the Giffinger, a city well performing in a forward looking way in economy, people, governance, mobility, environment and living built on the smart combination of endowments and activities of self-decisive, independent and avar citizens. So in uh, literature, we can actually um, divide two uh, groups of uh, people or opinions. So the first one is uh, smart city as a sustainable city using technology and digitization as a tool for sustainability. And the second one, the narrower one, is uh, based on the introduction of technology and digitization, especially for the management of urban infrastructure, including critical one. So that's the difference. Uh, the smart city concept, the let's say broadly accepted, um, gets on smart economy, smart people, smart living, smart governance, smart mobility, and smart environment. The second part of literature review is actually focusing on smart city destination models. So something what's narrower and focusing on, on tourism, on tourism destinations. Uh, that means uh, it's um, viewed from point of view of destination management organizations and uh, their or its partners. And of course, uh, dealing with the relations between visitors and local residents. So means that also in this respect, two groups can be separated or identified. So the first group of authors uh, explained the related concept of smart city destination as the interconnected and by technology mediated city, including data management, striving for efficiency. And the second one explains the smart city destination as a holistic system striving for sustainability based on uh, sustainable development goals 2030, human well-being development of social and human capital. So the base, uh, of uh, this theoretical review for the following uh, analysis uh, was the concept um, presented in five points. Uh, I mean, the concept of smart city destination model, strategy and governance, that's something what was, um, what was analyzed actually, technological solutions, so the relations between two points, and of course, data collection and management. The human capital and skills, knowledge transfer, ecosystem management, however, they are uh, extremely important. They were not uh, analyzed in this, in this paper. Concerning the methodology, uh, the methodology is based on uh, previously uh, or, or um, predominantly on the you know, qualitative approach uh, with uh, comb combination uh, with quantitative uh, data just to have base or basic indicators relevant to the investigated problem. I mean the uh, relation between visitors and residents. Three cities were uh, chosen, uh, Vienna and Val Valencia. Uh, the reason was that uh, these two city destinations were awarded uh, many times in the last decades by different prizes, um, yes, dealing with the, with the sustainable or, or smart tourism. And Prague as a destination uh, where I live, and uh, Prague actually uh, hasn't been awarded uh, never uh, by, by any, any prize. 
content analysis uh, was the main method. So uh, focusing on brief characteristic of destination governance, smart destination strategy and planning, tourism digitization tools and project. And then of course, uh, comparative analysis. Okay, data set. Uh, data set was, um, um, or can be divided uh, according to the to the uh, particular city destinations, and uh, covers, of course, the website of each of the city, and then especially strategic documents. So, uh, strategic documents for general smart uh, cities and general uh, documents for uh, destination smart cities. Yeah, and that's the first uh, comparison. Uh, we can we can see the basic indicators of uh, international and domestic arrivals and overnights in each of the mentioned and compared cities. Uh, so, of course, we can see the big drop in 2020, and then the um, somehow substitution of uh, or partly substitution of uh, international guests by the domestic ones, uh, but partly substitutions. Uh, only Valencia was able to return to the original values of uh, 2019 in 2022, while Prague reached only yes 74, respectively 73, and um, similar uh, to Vienna. The relative share of domestic demand in arrivals and receipts remains higher in 2022 for all destinations compared to 2019. So uh, this is really uh, just, just the base uh, because also domestic tourism uh, or share of domestic tourism uh, can be important uh, in uh, strategic development of uh, smart smart cities. And uh, exactly the, this uh, comparison uh, deals with the selected indicators for Valencia, Vienna, and Prague in terms of uh, uh, relation between residents and between, between visitors. So uh, we used uh, basic indicators uh, like uh, tourism contribution to the city GDP, which is, uh, of course, in terms of sustainability and the economic pillar of sustainability, uh, uh, very, very important. Then tourism intensity and tourism density. We can uh, conclude that the influence uh, of tourism on residents in Prague is the strongest, extremely strong compared to to Valencia uh, and Prague. Then, of course, the qualitative part of the analysis, uh, I mean, the, the documents, um, <clears throat> we can uh, say more or less that uh, from uh, this big picture, everything is more or less the same. So when we compare destination governance, when we compare strategic planning and management, but uh, mm, when we when we uh, go more in detail, more inside, so we can see that uh, in Prague, uh, there are some points, uh, sh they should be pointed, uh, especially in terms of strategic plans, uh, because uh, yes, there are strategic plans, but uh, there is no evaluation, there are no uh, KPIs uh, precisely defined and monitored. Uh, also, the communication of the strategic plans to partners, to, to residents, uh, Vienna and Valencia, they have really very good system of uh, not only of communication, but also, for example, uh, of uh, monitoring indicators, how the residents see, how they perceive uh, tourism or tourists, uh, but Prague uh, not. So the communication is really very, very fragmented uh, across different documents. Um, yeah, they are published in English, but uh, that's all. And tourism data, it's very, very uh, important because uh, in Prague, there is no uh, continuous data collection, data monitoring uh, compared to Valencia and Vienna. Uh, concerning the strategies, uh, <clears throat> we can say that uh, Prague really insists in this smart concept based on technological on, and digital concept, uh, while Valencia and Vienna, they are, uh, let's say, um, going more to sustainable concepts to more to sustainability. Uh, then concerning the um, 
relation between general smart strategy and destination smart strategy. So there are some um, lacks um, or gaps uh, in Prague between or among these strategic documents. Uh, however, um, the documents exist, but they are not uh, connected uh, each to other. So concerning the, the residents, so many activities are only declared in Prague and not really um, done and not really uh, implemented. Two minutes, yeah. okay. Two, two. And uh, the last one um, is uh, actually the comparison of uh, digital projects. So uh, in Prague, there are some of digital projects, but it's uh, obvious that the absence of strategic base and strategic planning uh, is projected also in this, uh, in launching and planning these particular projects. So we can see that uh, Prague uh, introduced city card, something what's uh, um, let's say very common in other um, European city destinations in 2022. So it's relatively late and uh, it's something uh, what, uh, what's great, uh, but uh, it's, uh, or it was, it was too late. Then other indicators, so we can talk about uh, absence of B2C personalization, of uh, absence of B2B solution or um, digital innovation in internal management. Yeah, then, uh, what uh, or how to how to conclude? Uh, so we can say um, that the first premise uh, can be confirmed as Prague, which realizes high volumes of incoming tourism with a noticeable impact on the lives of residents, legs behind in the area of strategic management and developing model of the smart city destination and uh, can be confirmed if Prague is not considered uh, a smart destination, Valencia and Vienna solve sustainability problems compre comprehensively in all three areas by implementing smart innovations. Prague shows significant fragmentation, incompatibility and delays in this agenda. Yes, there are uh, some theoretical implications here. So you can see them in the in the paper and of course practical implications, especially for destination management organizations or stakeholders, uh, partners. Uh, so we can say that uh, there are really huge uh, space, huge reserves uh, for Prague uh, to, to go the way uh, to be smart or, or uh, sustainable destinations based especially on, on data. And uh, yeah, as uh, every research uh, study, also this study has uh, its limitations, not only the territorial ones, but also uh, the absence in this study of economic context. So uh, I, I mean that as in, in, um, in Prague, there is really a huge, huge space to be filled in. Okay, so thank, thank you. you very much thank you very uh, and much. your answers. <clears throat> Any questions, please? Have one minute to stick to the schedule, please. Yeah. Uh, well, Valencia and Vienna, uh, when, when we uh, compared different ratings and um, awards, uh, so we could see that everywhere is, or not everywhere, but very often was Valencia and Vienna, they were awarded. And uh, yeah, I would say that one of the really uh, smart concept of uh, or of the visibility uh, that the concept is smart is communication of data, not only monitoring uh, of data, but uh, communication of data to the partners, to the residents, uh, even even to the tourists. So Valencia is was really. According to my experience, because I'm really practitioner uh, in in this in this field, uh, Valencia has uh, absolutely uh, I, I don't want to say best, but what one of the best monitoring system, very interactive. You can you can really 
Yes, th th that's the that's the platform. That's something what what's really what's really great. Uh, condition number two was uh, UNESCO listed city and uh, city with airport, so uh, the uh, international tourism. So that that was why I compared the the uh, international and uh, and domestic tourism. And Prague, of course, uh, I I know that Prague uh, is is not. Um, number one destination or rated number one in this respect. Uh, however, the the potential and the uh, figures are really really huge also for the for the future. And uh, yeah, that, that was that was actually coincidence because uh, we we have chosen Valencia, and then I could see that some people in the organizing committee or scientific committee are from Valencia. So it was really funny, but it was it was uh, coincidentally uh, chosen. Not uh, not it was not the primary uh, reason for this. But uh, congratulations to Valencia! Excellent, mm -hmm. really excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're unfortunately very. Uh, a little bit running out of time, so thank you very much to, to, to continue the discussion during the coffee break. And I would like to welcome our next speaker with mobile banking applications use. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the possibility to be here. It's a great pleasure. Uh, I want to change the topic for a moment because we are talking about tourism. I will tell you about the um, banking applications. So we prepared the study with our student uh, and uh, now I want to uh, show you uh, what we did. So uh, first of all, the motivation of our study was um, because uh, smartphones are currently using uh, very often so more than 50 percent of the of the users uh, want to use the, the smartphone device to search the net and others there's also uh, the huge possibilities for banks to get get in this uh, market and uh, for the business there is a very um, very much benefits to, to using the, the uh, mobile applications because uh, the users don't don't need to go to the browser and uh, search the website to do something on the web application. They uh, download the application, they have a shortcut on the desktop and every day they use this. Uh, there is also a possibility to push the notification and sell the other products of the of the uh, company. Uh, there is a better UX for um, than the responsive web applications and uh, greater possibilities uh, in mobile apps. So there is many benefits for a company to build something like that. The uh, not all users know that uh, the banking application is not just to check the balance of the account and make the transactions. There is also uh, other possibilities, uh, for example, to exchange the currency or uh, the, uh, pay for the tickets for, for train or or uh, highway. So there is multiple possibilities to, to use this application. But uh, not all of users using this uh, mobile application for banking. And the literature suggests some possibilities, like, uh, first of all, the concern of uh, about the security and privacy. Um, some users can un unseen the benefits of using this, uh, this um, uh, mobile banking application, some personal preferences, and also the problems with the portable uh, technologies, because the, the device is small, the, the keyboard is small, it's a little difficult to use it. It's not so convenient. So many of uh, many of user uh, don't want to uh, do some things on on uh, mobile devices. But this is the possibility suggested by the literature. We want to uh, check it more specifically. So we uh, build the uh, acceptance model of uh, which can explain the connection between some variables and the customer's intention of using the mobile uh, banking applications. 
So we uh, conduct this study in Poland. The Poland, uh, the reason why Poland is, of, of course, because we are from Poland is the first one, but also is a very, very interesting market. Uh, Poland is one of the most development countries in, not even in Europe, but in the whole world about the um, banking and finance sector uh, development in new technologies. We are on the uh, sixth place on the whole world. We are better developed in new technologies in finance than USA, for example. But in the same situation, we are um, at the very end of the list uh, in the, the reports about the basic skills, digital skills in citizens. So worse than Poland is only two countries. So um, on the one side, we have a very, um, very good market of the financial technologies and on the other side, the very worst uh, digital skills of the um, population. Uh, so uh, first of all, we, we have to uh, develop uh, our variables. We um, uh, we uh, de de depend on on uh, many theories. Uh, first variable is attitude uh, based on theory of reason and action. Uh, then we have the two variables based on the technology acceptance model of Davis, this per per perceived usefulness and intention uh, to use. Then the other two variables uh, based on information system success model, the service and the system quality and satisfaction based on expectancy disconfirmation theory. Uh, then per safe security uh, based on the uh, one of uh, works. There's the, the, the security is not the um, commonly discussed uh, variable in the acceptance model. So it was very interesting point for us. Uh, also the per safe availability. So uh, is the, the application working in the time? It's for mobile uh, banking application, it's also very interesting variable because um, we can use this also in time when the banks are closed. So the customer service is still every time and we we need our finance every time sometimes in the um for example in christmas or or at night because we we need to make some transaction and the banking uh, application give us this possibility so it's also very interesting uh, variable in our model and uh the the first version uh, of our model um connecting these, these variables, and we uh, developed 10 hypotheses uh, for uh, this uh, model. Uh, we use uh, the uh, partial least squares uh, structural equation modeling, uh, conduct the survey. We, it was about 200 re um, replies of this, this, this survey. It was seven point scale uh, Likert, and um, it was uh, three months we collecting the data by Google Forms, then we use the uh, software uh, to uh, SME modeling and um, this is the result. Uh, but I will show you it on the on the model, which is uh, clearly uh, view. So uh, we can see that uh, many of uh, hypotheses in this in this study was uh, confirmed. It was uh, six hypothesis confirmed on our uh, on our study uh only three was uh so, sorry four was um dismissed so uh we stand that uh, the perceived security is the most important thing that uh users uh for users to use the uh, mobile banking application uh, so it has large significant impact on both attitude and also in service and system quality. So we uh, have two hypotheses uh, here and uh, the perceived usefulness uh, seems not significant in the model at all for all three hypotheses that was uh, the perceived usefulness in this particular case was not, uh, was not relevant. Uh, also, um, other hypothesis, the per safe availability has a significant impact on attitude and the system and service quality has a significant impact on attitude also, and also for intention to use. 
and the attitude had a significant impact in to intention to use. There was the uh, the the results of our uh, modeling, and the conclusion is that the satisfaction and attitude are uh, two main aspects that uh, directly affect the intention to use uh, and perceived ability and service and system quality have a significant impact in, on at the attitude. But the key factor of mobile banking app acceptance is the security. And we uh, it, this is the point that companies, bank companies should uh, work on. Uh, so the security should be a primary concern of the companies. Uh, also, uh, the, comp the bank companies making the, the application should enhancing user satisfaction uh, by offering um, a compre uh, comprehensive range of service, uh, creating e easy to use application and uh, with a good user experience. And uh, this uh, the 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 pro the design should be centered on the user. Sh he should be sh he should feel that she's safe and that the, this this is easy and transparent for him. Uh, because in every other situation, uh, this act of, this act of acceptance will be will be lower. So uh, the the application should be intuitive, easy to use, and uh, meet the customer uh, needs. Uh, and also at the at the uh, at the end, uh, it's good to invest in new technologies to give the users better features, better function functionalities, and uh, better service quality, and to improve the uh, usability of these applications. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Any questions, please, from the audience? Yes, please. Yes, we collect the uh, the demographic information. There was uh, most uh, most uh, in this group was was women. Uh, it's about seventy percent, and um, most of them was students. So there was a young population. So I think that they have a uh, good uh, qualifications to using the, the the smartphone devices. But for for some cases, they uh, they don't use it. <laughs> Maybe they uh, for, first of all they they don't feel secure because many you know banks. This is the, the the same situation why we introduce bitcoins for and and a whole blockchain because uh, the lack of uh, especially in a young society the lack of um, trust to to the banks and I think sh here uh, it may be the, the 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 same situation the lack of uh, transparency of the bank institution and the the fear of uh, missing privacy I think. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, please.
I hope I understand correctly because we hear I hear you not so well. But uh, about the, the the group, yeah, the the the, the um, this was only uh, the main goal of this study was not to um, look how is how this acceptance works for for a hundred percent, but to create the the model to um, like you know the methodology uh, tool to make some other researches. So uh, of course we plan to uh, make this this uh, study with the larger group and also maybe it's a good idea to to make some clus cluster analysis of this this users and maybe some differences will be uh, will be shown but it was not just in the student group but the student group was was the main uh, it was the the biggest yeah the biggest group in this this, this study but we we want to uh, to work on this in the future so i I think we we take your suggestion to, to make it larger. Thank you very much. S sorry, I didn't hear you very well. Thank you, Arthur. The microphones will be better on the on the. Okay. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you for your presentation once again. And I'd like to invite our last but not the least, definitely speaker, who will tell us about the pilgrimage tourism. Yes, go going back to the tourism topic in this session. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Blandina and uh, with my colleague Tatiana, we prepared a presentation which is part of uh, our project. Uh, I will talk about that. Uh, we come from Bratislava, from Comenius University, and I am connected also with uh, one university in the Czech Republic. Uh, the topic uh, of the presentation, as you can see, is uh, building a smart system of pilgrimage tourism through a mobile application for Mary's uh, Way in Slovakia. Okay, here is a uh, key points uh, for uh, today's presentation. We will talk about smart, slow, and religious tourism, about pilgrimage. I will int introduce you. Uh, the project uh, very briefly, Project Rur Alur, and uh, our activities, I mean Slovak activities in the project, and after that I will introduce you our research, and we will go to conclusions uh, before uh, break, before coffee break. Uh, and now we can start with uh, the definition of tourism. Uh, we can see that tourism is a journey away from one's home, lasting up to a year, taken for purposes such as leisure, business, and related, uh, related uh, activities. Uh, smart tourism is uh, very often linked uh, with application uh, of intelligent technology in the tourism industry. It is very modern and uh, we uh, listen to, uh, listen to uh, a lot of uh, information about that. Uh, in uh, another way, we can say that uh, smart tourism is the way how integrate information technology and tourist exper experience. Uh, if we look at uh, pilgrimage tourism, we can say that uh, it is combination tourism and uh, pilgrimage. And then nowadays, it's very popular, and from a marketing point of view, it's uh, also a very attractive uh, marketing element. Uh, let's talk about slow tourism, which is uh, nowadays also very popular. Uh, it's linked very often uh, with uh, mm, uh, during these days uh, with the uh, uh, mm, situation of some of them. One of uh, one was uh, the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic situation. Uh, the slow tourism is chosen because of uh, minimizing uh, carbon footprint. 
people want to take uh, more time for deeper exploring destinations. This emphasizes on supporting local products, uh, discovering heritage. Uh, they want to be more uh, well being, uh, they want to slow down on uh, physical and mental levels. Uh, we are struggling very often uh, with burnout and maybe slow tourism in one way, how to manage it. Uh, they, uh, uh, it means uh, tourists uh, choose uh, this uh, form of tourism because uh, they uh, want to uh, emphasize value, or values uh, like uh, relaxation, self-reflection, escape, excitement, mindfulness, and engagement. Uh, religious tourism, on the other hand, is uh, the oldest form of tourism. Very often is uh, linked uh, with events organized by the church uh, and the religious communities. Uh, tourists, uh, the religious oriented uh, want to visit the religious sites, but uh, they also want to uh, see cultural aspects, uh, natural as aspects uh, along uh, the way, uh, which is uh, linked uh, with reli uh, religion. Uh, they uh, desire to visit a religious monument for uh, architectural, uh, architectural uh, significance, uh, they uh, want to gain insights into the historical context, rituals and traditions, and they want more explore uh, the surrounding areas. And let's talk about pilgrimage. Uh, pilgrimage is linked very often with uh, the rituals, liturgy, prayer, uh, reflection with individual or a group of uh, striking through the landscape. Uh, it's a traditional way, but uh, in modern way, uh, we can see that uh, pilgrimage react uh, on the society's problems, uh, uh, which is linked with uh, environmental, political, historical, economical, cultural, health aspects. And now we are talking about uh, our, our project, uh, which is a uh, project supported by European Commission uh, under the program Horizon 2020. Uh, the project is uh, focused on promoting rural museums, monuments, and cultural heritage sites near European pilgrimage routes across European countries. Uh, there are seven uh, participants, as uh, you can see, and uh, the Aim is uh, to design the IT platform and mobile application for customers. Uh, they can uh, plan uh, their journey with their preferences, transportation choices, uh, types of points of interest, uh, values, uh, attitudes, uh, and their needs. Mm, here's information about our uh, way of Mary. It means uh, it's a part uh, which uh, we uh, work on it with my colleagues uh, in Slovakia. Uh, Slovakia is uh, now uh, in the green uh, color uh, in the center uh, in the center of Europe. And the way of Mary uh, is uh, the uh, in the uh, Slovak language is called Via Maria. Uh, cross the country from uh, north uh, to south. Uh, we had uh, we had a different uh, situation in comparison to other participants of the project, uh, because uh, in Slovakia there are two uh, ways of marriage. Um, one of them is uh, very famous, and uh, he crossed the country from uh, west to north. Uh, but uh, the east, sorry, uh, but uh, this uh, Via Maria is not very well known. Therefore, we had to uh, work uh, everything from scratch. Here is uh, the information or the picture. Uh, maybe it's uh, better to understand uh, what I am talking about. Uh, therefore, we decided to do research. Uh, we used uh, qualitative methodology, uh, content analysis, and our sources uh, came from books, maps, websites, international materials from municipalities and stakeholders. 
we used open coding uh, procedure and we identify points of interest and narratives. Uh, after that, uh, we uh, used uh, thematic analysis and uh, this uh, method revealed five fundamental categories. Uh, pilgrimage sites, natural heritage sites, ethnographic and cultural attractions, experiential touristic spots, and narratives. And now uh, we are going uh, one by one uh, through these categories. First was uh, pilgrimage sites. There are a lot of uh, pilgrimage, uh, very interesting points. Uh, we uh, choose uh, with my colleague uh, for this presentation only two uh, churches. Uh, you can see on the picture, one of them is awarded by the European Nostra and inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. And the second one is the largest uh, church uh, building in Central Europe. And it uh, was built in one year without the uh, use uh, of iron nails uh, uh, by the master Carperton who could not read and write, which is very funny. Uh, the second category is uh, natural heritage. Uh, there are a lot of uh, aspects uh, that you can enjoy uh, in Slovakia or in, along the way of Mary. Uh, for example, they, uh, you can find a lot of uh, caves, uh, valleys, uh, primal forest, uh, botany garden, lakes, uh, and thermal and mineral springs. Uh, some places uh, you can call that it's uh, places without uh, touching uh, the, uh, the hands of uh, people. Uh, ethn uh, ethnographic cultural attractions uh, are linked uh, with uh, folk ar ar architecture reservations, uh, with castle, chate, uh, museums, uh, or folklore festivals, uh, which are very popular uh, for foreigners. Uh, experiential tourist spots uh, is linked with national cultural monuments, uh, with agro-tourism, uh, people uh, can use uh, horse riding or uh, taste traditional local gastronomy and can walk through a fairy tale paradise, uh, which is attractive not only for children, but for parents and grandparents too. Uh, next uh, is the narrative. Uh, we identified three groups of narratives, uh, which is linked uh, to a uh, way of Mary. The uh, first one is uh, cultural monuments. There are stories related to historical, cultural, and geographic sites. The second one is a uh, religious, uh, religiously oriented uh, point of interest, uh, which is linked with sacral buildings, pilgrimage uh, sites, and Calvary. And the third is linked uh, with uh, natural attractions. Uh, there are um, a lot of folk tales uh, related to beauties of nature, unique natural uh, phenomena. Uh, we uploaded uh, in these uh, narratives uh, in Slovak and in English, English uh, language. Uh, um, in uh, the a tourist can listen it, uh, uh, and it's uh, very easy to achieve. To. And uh, now it's a uh, uh, conclusion, uh, you know, the content of uh, the application uh, which we uh, prepared uh, was based on the results of the thematic analysis. Uh, I uh, said that uh, it was uh, these uh, five uh, categories which uh, shows uh, it very important. And on the right side, uh, you can see a uh, head of uh, the project, uh, Martin Lopez uh, from Spain, from uh, uh, University de Vigo. And he's uh, very proud and he's uh, very thrilled because uh, during the October, uh, the project uh, uh, won uh, the competition European Culture Tourism Network. Uh, that's all what I, uh, with my calling, wanted to share with you. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for an interesting presentation, for keeping the timing as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please, questions? Anything? Yes, please.
yeah, that would be very helpful. Uh, thank you very much for a, a beautiful uh, presentation that talks to our heart, those who are Roman Catholic. Um, I'm from South Africa, just for for understanding. Your, your studies focus on a, a particular pilgrimage site called the Way of Mary. Um, is, is there a reason why you're not maybe focusing on, I mean, in South Africa, when you go to South Africa and you talk to uh, Catholics or even Africa, most of them, they know Major Gori. I don't know, is it part of your study? Uh, yeah, this presentation was oriented more about content, uh, which was up, uh, uploaded uh, to, to the application. Uh, but uh, some uh, other countries uh, worked uh, with uh, different uh, categories. Uh, we didn't work uh, on uh, IT platform because uh, we, are, we are marketers or marketing communicators. Uh, but IT platform was under the control of Spain and Norway and uh, Hungary. I don't know if I would understand because I am not a good listener. Yeah. Thanks. Um, is your study not focused on Slovakia? Yes. Yeah, Major Gore is in Slovakia. So no, when Slovenia. I Slovenia. Like... Sorry? It's uh, in Slovenia, not Slovakia. Slovakia is different parts. In yeah, th there's a slide to show to off six sides. Medjugorje was there at the bottom. No, Medjugorje is uh, in uh, Slovenia. It's not in... So it's not part of your study? Mm, no, no, because okay. uh, they uh, didn't uh, join uh, the, research, uh, the research team. Uh, the journey uh, ended uh, not in Slovakia. It, uh, the, the end is in Poland, for example. But uh, po Poland researchers also need... Uh, that uh, don't need uh, don't uh, join uh, the, the our uh, our project unfortunately okay thank you very much for the discussion you could maybe continue discussing the geographical issue uh, during the coffee break thank you very much for the interesting presentation once again thank you very much everyone